to Grace University Lutheran Church, where Bjorn and Marvin have been members for a long, long time. Beloved members, dedicated, loyal, um, long history told. You feel Bjorn's um, absence, certainly. And though we are a small gathering because of the pandemic, with the gift of technology, later this week, worship and be a part of this service. And so we also say a warm welcome to all of them gather from, I'm sure, all of them to celebrate and to give thanks for the life of your Hudson. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We gather to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our brother Bjorn, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. For our gathering hymn, Morning Cry, we encourage you to hum along with the hymn, and if you choose not to hum, then please just read along with the text, and please stand as you are able.
pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our bro bro brother Bjorn. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion on our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. And those sharing your reflections may come up one at a time to the pulpit. Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to extend Judy's and my sincere sympathies to Margaret, Amy and Eric, Rachel, Lucas, Ben, and Bjorn, and to all the extended family members present, and those not present as well. Bjorn was always such an exemplary role model for me. His surgical skills, clinical judgment, and bedside manner were exemplary. His, I appreciate, appreciate so much his mentoring, his sound advice, and invaluable assistance in complicated cases. On, one, on more than one occasion, he bailed me out, placing a perfectly placed stitch, controlling a bleeding site in a difficult to see area. His patients loved and respected him. My father was one of them. I will, I will always be grateful to Bjorn, for he lived more than 20 years following his heart surgery. I feel extremely blessed to have been one of his colleagues for so many years, for so many fond memories, including an annual spring Ironman bike race, and for his loyal friendship. I was so touched when Margaret related that in his last few hours, she played a music CD, and upon hearing the words of the song, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. He then opened his eyes widely and slipped away into the arms of his Savior and Lord, no doubt. I'm sure that he heard the words, well done, faithful servant, and turned to the joy of my presence. And I pray that each one here today will have a personal faith in Jesus Christ so that we too, my day, will hear those very same words. Thank you. So Bernard Harrison was uh, going to be here. Someone has to take call. And uh, he called me about two hours ago and was involved in an emergency and felt sad that he couldn't be here. But, and I asked him if he wanted me to say some words for him. And I, so I took some notes. and. Uh, he said, you know, Bjorn has been such a mentor for him and a personal friend. And uh, we worked with, well, Bernard was training, Peter and Bjorn and I worked at the Veterans Hospital. And so we met Bernard uh, early on. Um, and, and he said he, he didn't know anyone else like this. I think the, in this profession, what I know, I think Peter's found and I found is there's so much time spent working and the personal time to develop other friendships is, is always difficult. Um, but he was such a friend. Um, he thanked him for his tutelage uh, and the fact that he hired him, which Bernard was, or Bjorn was the chair of the department when, uh, when Bernard was hired. And he owes a debt of gratitude. And then he teared up. And uh, he told the story. Actually, uh, Margaret and I were talking about this story. Um, and, it, and I was curious about it because I, I, had, I had no idea how, it, you know, how me and Bernard would remember this, but I. Uh, I, I was just kind of surprised by it, but 
we had a we had tried to do annual picnics and there was one and it may have been the last annual picnic that we had which was out of my lake cabin in Minnetonka and Elmari knows the story and uh, but it was uh, light was getting dim it was the end of the end of the evening and uh, so I, I think I'm not sure if Bjorn suggested or if I suggested it um, but I eventually we were uh, uh, water skiing at, at uh, the end of the day and, and saw, saw tandem slalom ski which is actually the first time I've ever tandem slalom ski uh, but we, we both thought we'd do it and Mark was quite upset and uh, but this touched um, Bernard um, because it says a lot about you know Bjorn and the things that he liked to do and and you know their Norwegians are difficult to get their you know their emotions up and um, but he was game for a you know game for a game uh, and he wanted to do this he did it and and just the grace that he was out there skiing and it was a lot of fun uh, but uh, it just said something about how he how he lived his life and and who he was, and then that's where Bernard's words. So, for my part, um, these are words that that many of you have heard. Um, it is from Henry Scott Holland, and it was a sermon in 1910. Um, Death is nothing at all; it does not come. I have only slipped away into the next room. Nothing has happened. Everything remains exactly as it was. I am I, and you are you. And the old life that we lived so fondly together is untouched, unchanged. Whatever we were to each other, that we are still. I met Bjorn in 1987. It was you know, my um, connection with his family goes back actually before Bjorn, but to his sister Stephanie, who, you know, kind of arranged this meeting. I needed a different job, and Bjorn and Peter needed a partner. And uh, it grew into this, you know, for me, wonderful, rich relationship with, you know, first it was Peter, Bjorn, and I, and, and then Bernard came. And, the, as you know, Bjorn had two admissions to the hospital before he passed away. And the, the, uh, the first one, which was about a month or five weeks ago or something like that, I helped get him up to his room and we were sitting there chatting one day and I, we were talking about, you know, I said, well, how, how did you and Margaret meet? And it's such a wonderful story because they met at her uh, grandmother's Apartment in St. Paul, and John and Stephanie, and John was at the seminary, and Bjorn stopped over to, you know, I think, be with you guys, and there's this cute young girl who was, I think, you were four or five years younger, and was, I don't know if you opened the door for him, but he said, uh, I looked at her and I fell in love with her at that very moment, and I, I was so touched by that. And I, I was thinking back to how the Munson family grew up, you know, in Canby, and the, his dad was a doctor. I mean, you know all this stuff, but they summered, and I don't know what summer it was at Catacon, and I think they stayed at Bailey's, but I'm not sure. And there are, you know, some wonderful stories, but the, they, it was a small resort, and as you know, people that own small resorts are different than the people that own Craigans and Grandview, that they're catered to a different kind of crowd. And it's a very, I think these resort owners are very proud of what they have. And they could care less, I think, if you want to go to Craigans or, or Grandview with it. They're happy to have you come, but you don't have to come. And they just developed a certain kind of persona. And um, I think when I know that when Bjorn was tasked with starting this program at Methodist, that he looked to his upbringing and looked to this kind of personality of a small resort 
and as he referred to it over the years, that we really were kind of a small mom uh, hospital resort cardiac program. And whether the patients went to, to Abbott or went to Mayo, you know, honestly, he could have cared, I could care, Peter would have cared, could have cared. If you want to come to us, that's fine, but we're going to take care of you, and it's going to be very personalized care. Uh, it also attracted a certain type of person that worked with us. They wanted to work with a smaller program. They wanted to have a personal, personal touch with the patients. Most of the people who worked with us worked their entire career, from nurses in the operating room to people in the office um, to the surgeons. So it, it, this you know, idea of a, of a small you know, resort uh, cardiac surgery program you know, attract this certain people. This served Park Nickel very well. Uh, the Park Nickel was very proud of this program, as were the, the different providers that sent patients there, so it was a big deal. And as the years went on, we operate on a person, we operate on maybe their wife too, their son, their uncle, their neighbor, and they would come back for more surgery because they like the care so much. And, and again, this is this small uh, resort idea. And if you have ever worked with Bjorn, he is very technically capable. He is, was very, very patient. Um, some of these operations take a terribly long uh, period of time to do, and they're very tedious. And uh, for me, you know, you always have this um, idea, can I do this? Am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to stop the heart for three or four hours and do all the surgery and get this patient going? And oh, Bjorn could do it much faster, but they're working with Bjorn. And, you know, he helped us through these things. And I think because of that, we were given the strength to feel that we could actually do these things. And it helped us develop more complex procedures, such with Peter, mitral valve repair, that he's done so nicely. And, uh, Bernard has done a great job with these really complex uh, aortic surgeries. Um, so when he retired, I thought, oh my God, we're done. You know, Bjorn's gone, he's not going to be here, and what are we going to do? But he had, you know, helped uh, get this framework of a program going so it was self sustaining and everything was fine. Um, and I think for the family who's left in, in Bjorn's absence, I think that he uh, and Margaret provided this framework of um, caring and support that is so important for all of you in his, in his absence. And to continue on with Henry Scott Holland, call me by the old familiar name. Speak of me in the easy way that you always used to. Put no difference in your tone, wear no forced air of soundness nor sorrow. Laugh as we always laughed at the little jokes that we enjoyed together, particularly the one where Bjorn drove over the wooden boat in Capacona Bay. Play, smile, think of me, pray for me. Let my name be ever the household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without an effort. Without the ghost of a shadow upon it. Life means all that it permanent. It's the same, <clears throat> the same as it ever was. There is absolute and unbroken continuity. What is this death but a negligible accident? Why should I be out of mind because I'm out of sight? I'm but waiting for you for an interval. Somewhere very near, just around the corner. All is well. Nothing is hurt, nothing is lost. One brief moment, and all will be as it was before. How shall we laugh at the troubled parting when we meet again? Thank you. This poem is titled The Healer. He did 
not look the part. When he walked in that day nearly 12 years before, slow with measured stride, a plain and honest man, his look direct and calm, his manner unpretentious, one did not see his art, his way of making bodies whole, he did not look the part. But twice he held my heart and used his skillful hands to bring its life blood where it had not gone and given me more years, more years than I may know, to live and love and laugh, to struggle with my dark and glory in God's light. But twice he held my heart. Grace comes in many ways, as word that lifts our guilt, as love that wraps our pain, as calm when all is calm, as laughter rolling out, as hands that fell in need, as feet to run to help, as gift to bring to tears, as hope when all is dark, grace comes in many ways. But none more great than his. He is not God Almighty and unbound, but when those humble hands move to do their work, there is no one but God working his will to life, giving us years and help, giving us one more chance, new paths of possibility, but none more great than his. chapter 6. Jesus said, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by any worry add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. And from Matthew chapter 9. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the realm of God. 
and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In God's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, am there you may be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Pastor Dan Garnis's homily that he wrote for this day, and he is unable to be here today. And I will adapt his words as are needed with first person or third person, and I have permission to do this as I am also his spouse. So. Margaret and Bjorn, grandkids, siblings, in-laws, and friends gathered here. Dan so wishes he could be here with you in person in this beloved sanctuary to remember and honor Bjorn, to celebrate his life, to give thanks to God for the deep privilege and gift of having known Bjorn. Others may well have already said, but Bjorn was a gentle, strong, loving man. I always felt his presence, says Dan, as he sat with you, Margaret, in this space on the pulpit side about halfway back. His spirit, quiet and gentle and strong, filled the space. And I always felt somehow safer, better, more at home when Bjorn was nearby. I chose the gospel lessons for the service because they remind me of Bjorn. They are, of course, about Jesus. Stories about what he cared about, what he taught, his ministry for others, and how he understood God's love. Jesus often used examples of nature, birds, lilies, fish, plants, trees, to teach his followers. For Jesus, creation held the sacred. And there is a loan on the front of this beautiful bulletin. A photograph taken by Bjorn. Bjorn, too, I believe, found the sacred in nature, in bees, in the tending of them, in the loons and their amazing call. I can picture Bjorn in his boat, on the lake, savoring each moment, the lake air, the breeze on his cheek, the wildlife both above and below the water. Jesus would often go into the wilderness to the hills, along a river to recharge, to quiet himself, to be close to God. And then he would go back into the cities and towns to be with people, to teach, and as Matthew tells us, to heal. Jesus simply loved others. He had compassion for them and cared deeply and did all he could to bring God's love and healing to their lives. As Dan writes, a few years back, he suffered a second heart attack. The medical folks were unclear what to do, stents were placed, but then surgery was a question. His heart was kind of a mess. He had many questions and fears and concerns, and he thought, what should I do? Go see Bjorn, of course. He remembers as if it was yesterday, going into your living room, Margaret, to sit with Bjorn, the teacher and the healer. Just being with him made him feel better. He took the time to teach, to look at Dan's films, to reassure him. And when Dan asked for his recommendation, he told him what he thought. And Dan, Dan did what he was told and all worked out. Dan wonders how many others have similar stories. 
so many touched by his skilled hands. It's often said, if you need to have surgery, it's best to have a gifted surgeon who understands the body. But if you find a surgeon who also understands and loves people, then all will be well. Bjorn was one of those, a healer of the physical heart and a healer of the emotional heart, the spiritual heart, a pastoral physician. I'm guessing, Dan says, Bjorn wasn't perfect. He was human after all. But he was a very good man, kind, generous, loving, an adoring husband, a loving father, a dedicated grandfather and father-in-law. He absolutely made the world a better place and he made a difference and his life has been a gift. For you who knew him best, who loved him and who Bjorn loved, his death leaves a big hole. Margaret, Bjorn, Amy, grandkids, family and dear friends. Our hearts are filled for you. We carry you in our prayers and by our love, as does the Grace community, who would love to be a part of it and will in the way they can. Jesus loved nature. He was a healer. To those who listened, Jesus pointed them to God's steadfast love, a God who is loving, forgiving, and full of mercy. And Jesus lived that love. And when he faced his death, when he knew he would soon be leaving the people he loved, he gave them hope and gave them promise. His love, that divine love, doesn't end at death. It goes on. And Jesus was clear in his conviction that God's love is with us and for us in life and in death. And he uses that wonderful imagery of a house with many, many rooms where there is place for all God's children. Bjorn, beloved and baptized child of God, is now in good hands, in healing hands, in loving hands, just as he was here on earth. He will be missed. His going on ahead of us leaves a hole in our hearts. But we too are in good, healing, loving hand. And God promises to all of us, in the words we hummed or read at the morning cry, and when evening gently closes in, and you shut your weary eyes, I'll be there as I have always been, with just one more surprise eternal life and resurrection. We thank God for God's eternal presence with us. We thank God for being our We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, mercifully grant to all who mourn a sure and certain hope in your loving care, that casting their grief on you, they may have strength for the days and weeks ahead. Be with Margaret and Amy and Bjorn and their family, as they grieve their beloved husband, father, and grandfather, brother, co-worker, friend. Guide and support them in the 
days ahead. God of mercy, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for Bjorn, for the grace and mercy he received from you, for all that was good in his life, for the memories we treasure. God of mercy. God, you became our bread of life in Jesus. As you nourished Bjorn at your table on earth, welcome him at your table in the realm of heaven. Be with all those who hunger for justice and peace. Empower those who care for bodies, hearts, lungs, the whole person. All those who dedicate their lives and care for others, as Bjorn did. God of mercy. God, the generations rise and pass away before you. You are the strength of those who labor. You are the rest of the blessed dead. We rejoice in the company of your saints. We remember all who have lived in faith and all who have peacefully died, especially those most dear to us who rest in you. Give us in time our portion with those who have trusted in you and have striven to do your will. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Mulberry's epitaph. Having lived long in time, he lives now in timelessness. Without sorrow made perfect by our never finished love, by our compassion and forgiveness, and by his happiness in receiving these gifts we give. Here in time, we are added to one another forever. Please stand as you are able. Let us commend Bjorn to the mercy of God, our Maker and our Redeemer. We remember, O oh merciful Savior, your servant Bjorn. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him to the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. At Grace, we have a tradition where we, we sing a blessing to people who are moving away or in a time of transition, those who have, have died. So I will sing that and you can hum with me. May Let us go forth in peace, in the name of Christ. We will process out as the postlude, as the prelude, as the postlude, yes, the postlude is played, and we will live it outside. 